Glasswire is your networking best friend. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and today we're here with another installment of the Code It series. A series of videos where we go ahead and make some stuff in the Java programming language. And whether you're an intro programmer or someone who knows a little bit more about Java, today we'll have a little bit for everyone. Now if you haven't caught the series before, this series is all about practical and getting hands on with programming rather than learning about theory and concepts and boring stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, we'll touch on it as we go, but today is all about getting hands on with the code. Now today we're going to be going ahead and making yourself a music player and with all these coded videos you can always find the code linked in that description box. So if you're just like, I want the code, see you later, you can find a link down in that description box. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start to make ourselves a standalone music player. Now that music player may not necessarily be the most advanced application, but the way we've written it today could easily be adapted into a larger piece of code or a larger application if you really did want to. So with that being said, let's jump over to the desktop and start doing some programming. Rightio, so we've jumped over here to our PC to go ahead and start going. Now, what I'm gonna do before we actually jump in and, um, well, actually type all this stuff up is I'll give you guys a bit of a demo. So I've gone ahead and done a couple practices right here. So the basic idea is we're gonna hit play like this and it's gonna go ahead and play us some music in the background as we can right here. And as we uh, move this guy over, you can see we've done a quick little uh, console printout because the music that we got right here, uh, because the music did kind of remind me of like an old sort of game kind of thing so I did grab myself a uh, little bit of an input so we'll show you how to write a program to play a music file and you can again easily adapt this into other programs and we might even be able to uh, adapt this to give you a path input but we'll see what we get up to today so first and foremost uh, we do need to go ahead and create ourselves a new program now I've already made myself a new folder right here music player uh, to do this you just basically right click on your SRC new and then package now if you just make yourself a new program Project, you won't need to do this and if you are using a different piece of software it'll be ever so slightly different but I do like to use packages for when I'm just keeping things in an IDE because it keeps things nice and uh, clean so first and foremost we have music play right here once we do go ahead and make the little folder or package we're gonna right click and we're gonna hit new Java class we're gonna give this guy a name we're gonna call this um what are we gonna even call this we'll just call it uh, music underscore player oops music player very, very simple name, making sure it doesn't conflict with anything. Now, before we go any further, what we may notice is this little WAV file right here. This is the song that we're going to be accessing. Now, it's important to put the music uh, in the same folder as what we're going to be doing here today. Even though we're going ahead and specifying direct uh, paths to the actual music, just keeps things really easy if you have the music in the same file as your, um, your Java class. If you're just working in the SRC folder, chuck your music in the SRC folder or chuck it in here. To go ahead and find where it's located, right click on the folder you are working on and then go through your menu and you can show in Explorer or show in Finder if you are on a Mac and you are using IntelliJ. If you're using a bit of a different problem, a bit different bit of program rather, uh, you may run into the um, the thing where it's going to be like up here in the menu or ever so slightly different. All in all, navigate to where your uh, Java class is going to be located and go ahead and put that music in. Again, we're using future-success.wav. Now, this particular software we are writing today, I believe will work with WAV files, uh, MP3, OGG, and I believe a couple uh, ACC FLAC type of files. So, whilst I don't exactly have a whole bunch to test, uh, uh, theoretically that is what it will go ahead and run with. So, let's go ahead and get started with the first and most important thing, and that is our imports. Usually, I like to get as much imports going at the start so we run into less issues down the road, but if you're writing from scratch, you don't really know. So, we've got a handful of imports that we do need to do. I'll punch them in and I'll let you know what they all are. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done all the import statements. Now, some of them will look familiar, such as our file IO exception that we've seen before. However, we got a number of imports that are relating to, well, sound, which is what we're doing here. So we've got things like the data line info, which we'll go ahead and work with, obviously our data lines. And we've also too got some import static Java X sound, which again, help with managing our sound. Now, we'll go more detail when we actually start to type up the code that relates to these bits and pieces here. But once we got this guy going, that's basically all the imports 
imports we'll need for the entire project. So if you're going to skip a little bit later just to get the whole code, you can uh, find these ready to go. But essentially, we've got our file I.O. right here and here to go ahead and manage the files that we'll be opening and shutting and that kind of stuff to open up the music. And then we've obviously got our import statements to deal with the audio. Now, you may notice I used a star uh, right here rather than a dot and then whatever. That's just mainly because there's a lot of imports for audio that we're using today. So I found it easier just to import all of them rather than just try and import all individually. I think individually there's like 10 or 11 imports that we're using right here. So just keeps things simple and nice and compact to just put it into one line, import it all. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if we're importing more than we're using. It's there, we can go ahead and use it. So now that we got that there, we can move up our bubbly class. We'll move it up to uh, line number nine and we can chuck some spacing in there because we're going to be whacking a whole bunch of code in here and we can start to program our um, program. Now, the first thing we obviously needed to do is our public static void. Without it, we can't run anything. So obviously that's the first thing we'll need to throw in here. So we've gone ahead and whacked that in. Now you may have noticed when I start to type, so let's say we start to type public. Uh, that's not gonna work for us today. We'll go over here and we'll just type public again. So you can see here we get some little suggestions. When you are writing programs, I recommend pushing tab to get them to actually fill out for you. It just saves you so many keystrokes and just makes your life so much easier. So if you see me typing words and stuff and I'm getting them printed out really fast, I'm just pushing tab again when I'm typing stuff. So for example, if I do capital S and, and then a T after that, we can see that string pops up. I can hit tab and then it fills in. Same again if we do uh, S out for system.out.println, it's gonna fill in if we are inside of a public. So sys out, boom, we can hit tab, it prints the whole line. Again, just keeps your life so much simpler and just makes the process so easy. So uh, back to what we were actually doing. Now that we've got our runnable method, we can see here we've got our green little triangles to play. We can first and foremost actually open uh, the, the music file that we want to do. Now, if you don't open the file first, then things do go downhill really, really fast. So the first thing we want to do is a final, and then we'll go with our cells. We'll call this guy uh, music player because that's what our class we are in right here. And we'll call this guy, let's call this guy player, and we will go, uh, give this guy new. And then, uh, actually we need equal sign first, new, and then uh, we'll call it music player as well. So that should work perfectly fine. Uh, that just gets things going and we get to use our player a little bit later. Once we've got player, well, we can go ahead and use it. So we'll go player dot play, play, and then we'll open up a file path. Now, what's important here, we'll get a little error until we uh, go ahead and uh, work this guy out later. But essentially, we need to give a direct path to this music file. Now, if you know where it is directly in your drive, good for you, but a lot of us don't. So we're gonna right click on this guy and in uh, IntelliJ anyway, we can copy path. A lot of other programs will do this as well, but we wanna copy path. If your program doesn't do this, uh, find the actual file, right click, go properties, and you can find the path right there. But IntelliJ does a good job of building a path for us. So we can copy that, go right in here. We can throw ourselves in some quote marks and we can right click and we can go ahead and paste. So that gives me a direct path to the actual music file itself. So we can see that it's in, uh, there's our future success inside of the music file, inside a source, inside of our programming, inside of my Google Drive, inside of the E drive. So direct path straight to the music file. We'll chuck ourselves on a little semicolon on the end and then we'll work out what it's saying about play. So we don't exactly have a method for play in our system right now, which is not the biggest problem because we're gonna write that right now. So we're gonna delete this little space right here come down here and we'll do public void play and get this thing going so public void play and then we'll do ourselves a string and file and then path so we can see right here file path is basically referring to right here so if we call this guy uh, test or we can see IntelliJ updates this. Essentially, this string right here just refers to uh, this line that we've just written here. But we'll call this guy file path so that we remember what on earth we've got going on here. Once we've got that semicolon on the end of that guy right there, and actually, no, we're going to use an open bracket. My mistake. What, so once we've got that, we now need to do more uh, basically opening and closing stuff. So I'm going to write up some code, then I'll get to explaining what on earth I've actually written. So 
we've gone ahead and just started ourselves a little final right here so we can actually access this file again it's just taking this path so we can use it in just a moment. So now we need to write ourselves a try and catch. Now this is essentially an error checking method to, well, make sure the music's there. And if there is no music there, what the program is going to do, because if there is a problem, so let's just say that we write a, um, a line that says in this line, you know, for example, play the music. Obviously that's not the command you need to use, but let's say we play the music. If the music doesn't exist, the program doesn't know what to do and it just cannot actually run. It, it just won't allow you to run. So what we need to do is use a try and catch with some if statements in there to say, well, we'll try this and if it is working, then we can go ahead and run the music and if not, then what do we actually do? So first off, we'll need to hit ourselves with some try. So we'll go with, we'll move down a line just to keep things simple. So try and then inside of here, we'll go with a final audio and we'll want to use an audio input stream. So if we just go down our list right here, audio input stream, and then we'll go in, just to keep things simple, obviously in equals, and then we'll go get audio input stream. Now we do want to use a file in our case. So obviously we're going to select file and the file that we're going to be running is called file. Oops, file. Now, obviously, if you wanted to use uh, different methods to so say, if you wanted to use uh, get audio stream and say you want to pull it from a website, you could use URL. If you want to pull it from other places, you can use other locations. Um, but for the sake of today, I'm just going to keep it with file. Now, yes, you may have noticed this little red line come up. Don't worry about that. That's just basically telling us, hey, we've got to try. What do I do if this try doesn't work? If I try doing this, then what? The computer doesn't know. We'll get to that in just a moment. So inside of here, we'll need to go ahead and grab ourselves some finals. So final, and then we'll go our audio. Uh, if I spell that right, audio, and we want audio format for this guy. And then we'll, go, we'll call this guy um, out format because this is going to be our get out format here. So get uh, out format. And then after that, we'll go and get out for uh, Matt. Yep, that's all right. And then we'll go with this guy and an in dot get format. Good, good, good. And then we'll whack this guy new line. Now, yes, there are some errors, but again, cannot resolve this and that. We'll get to that in just a moment. So we'll do ourselves a second final. Whoops, final. Uh, info, we'll call this guy, grab that, and info, just, just to keep naming things the same. Now, obviously, when you are writing this yourself, you can rename out format, you can rename info, uh, you can rename player, there's so many things you can rename, but for the sake of keeping things easy to understand, we'll just keep things with our basic type and naming schemes right here. So we've got info equals new, info, obviously right here, and we'll go source, uh, data line dot class, and we'll go with a follow-up of out, whoops, out format. So we go ahead and use that. Now, yes, the code is still complaining, but if we go ahead and check our light bulb, it says to uh, create method out format, which is what we're gonna be doing in just a moment. Give us a second IntelliJ. First off though, we need to do ourselves another try because it's gonna try doing this. If that's successful, we need a second try to go ahead and do some stuff. So we're gonna go another try, T-R-Y, and we'll throw in here final and then we'll go source data line again we want to use that data line equals line to keep things nice and easy to work with and we'll go ahead and equals open bracket source data line again source data line uh, we'll close that bracket off because that is the end of him audio system and we want a system just system where are we looking to go and then because of that we'll grab ourselves a get line and then inside here we'll get the info that we got before so we've got that line basically all well and good info is still having a bit of a tantrum but again the more we write the more that will come up and this is where we can actually write some functionality to play this music so we're going to grab ourselves an if statement because again, we want to make sure we have all that error checking and that kind of stuff. So if, and we'll go line uh, is not null. So exclamation mark and then null. There we go. Uh, we can go ahead and run this function. So in here, we want to go ahead and get ourselves some specific stuff right here. So we first off want to get line dot open and we want to go out format. 
Again, still going to be complaining because we haven't written all the stuff yet. So we've got our line out and then we also do need to grab ourselves the line start and then stream. Oops, stream. Get audio stream. And then we've got that. And inside of these brackets, we're going to grab ourselves the out format that we got just a moment ago. Still not too happy. Grab ourselves the in. And outside of that, we'll go with line. And close it off. And then here we go line dot drain and line dot stop. So basically, starts the music, runs all the functions that we're going to write in just a moment. That's why these guys are still red. And then once it's done, it's going to stop. Really, really simple. Now, because I thought this the music sounds sort of like a video game, if you want to add something to run at the same time, for example, our little menu scene right here, what I'm going to do is just paste this guy in. So it's going to present ourselves a bit of a little menu system right here. We'll like just knock off one of those lines just to get rid of those green things. So boom, we've got that. So we've got our little game screen right here. First thing we'll do is print this guy off, then it will run the music, and then once the music runs out, it will stop the music. Now, obviously, yes, we've still got all these errors. Let's go ahead and write some functionality. First thing, we'll close off two of these brackets. So, whoops, bracket one and a bracket two in this section right here. We'll write our first catch block. So this is basically the, well, what happens when the try doesn't work. So try this and we'll catch uh, that. So catch and we'll go uh, unsupported. Uh, audio file exception. We'll also to do a second catch, which is line uh, unavailable exception. And our final catch will be IOE catch, pretty standard there. And we'll call this guy UNLI uh, lowercase IOE. Bit of a mouthful, but we do understand that this exception is referring to that. Go ahead and uh, do this guy right here, and we'll go throw. New illegal, can spell illegal, capital I, legal access exception. Top one right there is what we want. And then we'll put in uh, this guy right here. So UN, uh, we'll just use a simple tab out. Close that guy off. So now if we do get an exception, it is throwing us a bit of a tantrum, but just taking a closer look, that is the wrong illegal. We want illegal statement exception, not illegal access exception. So I L L legal. Statement exception. There we go. Fixed up that error. My bad. Moving on from there. So we'll close off another two brackets. And this is where we can finally start to write some extra functionality regarding the actual music itself. So we'll go over here and make ourselves a new private. Go private audio format. And we'll go get out format. And then we'll go up here and go audio format in format. A lot of formatting in this. Matt, good. So it's got in. So what I'll do is I'll write this up and uh, we'll go through in just a moment. Okay, so we've gone ahead and written this guy. Basically, this is going to be our, all, our get out format function. So basically, as we go up here, we can see, hey, look, no longer red. So that's exactly what we wanted to see. Essentially, this is going ahead and doing some settings. So for example, we've got our sample size in bits. We set that to 16. You can play around with this for a bit, but for this example, we're using 16. Obviously, we've got our channels times two. I believe if you set that to one, it's just going to be one channel. I haven't really played with the actual channel itself. I played with bits before and there wasn't too much of a difference, but essentially this is some of our settings up for the audio. Again, I do recommend having a bit of a play around with it, see what it's doing. But again, for the sake of keeping this example relatively compact in this video, uh, we're just gonna write that up. Again, we do have to write ourselves another private void for the stream, which is right here, that is still red and that will fill in the last bits of red that we do need to do. So again, I'll write it up and uh, we'll come back with a full explanation for what we've actually finally achieved. Right here, so I've gone ahead and added the final two lines now. I did want to make a quick note, if you are typing this yourself, uh, I did accidentally leave out one of these braces right here, but I have gone ahead and corrected that. So if you are following along, just uh, remove this brace right here, and then also to uh, remove this one right here, rather add this one in, remove this one here. Um, but yes, my bad. Anyway, so that is now ready to go. So we'll whack our headphones on and we'll hit play and hopefully we'll hear our song. Run that. go. 
Now, again, as I did mention, we can play around with things. So if we make this one say, we'll do a one channel right there. We'll see what happens when that goes ahead and runs. It does throw an error. So there are some things you can play around with, other things you probably shouldn't go ahead and play around with. Um, again, in this section right here, which is something that I was gonna talk about before, Basically, again, we can double click on here and we see that our stream, which has all of our little bits and pieces in here, is what we've gone ahead and run. Again, much like our, our uh, previous final, uh, sorry, previous private audio format, this guy, Private Void Stream, again, just adding more functionality that we need. Without it, obviously not going to run because if we uh, just take this out, we can see things do kind of, well, go red. Only this guy goes red, but without it program won't work so we do need this guy right here again have a play around with the variables and have a play around with what goes on here but essentially this is the very basics you need to run some sort of audio file now uh, some applications will add the little add section in if you want you can do that otherwise we'll just leave as is and we go hit play and the audio will run So one final thing, if you did want to not necessarily specify a uh, single path, what you can actually do is before you do all this kind of stuff, just throw yourself in a, um, a printout with a scanner to ask the user where the music is located. And then rather than having a direct path like this, you can use uh, like a string or something in there. So you'd have yourself a scanner and then whatever the input from the user is, is you just replace that there and it will play whatever file that is. Theoretically, really easily, but um, yeah, that is about it for what we've got. So. Let's wrap things up. So there we go, a relatively simple program to go ahead and play ourselves some audio files. Now let's face it, no, it's not going to be blowing away the likes of Windows Media Player or even VLC, but it does go ahead and give us some basis to go ahead and build something more advanced on top of it or apply it into another application. For example, if you want to go ahead and play back voice controls if you are building yourself a GUI, using some simple ones like this would easily allow you to add some audio to that particular application. Or if you just wanted to play audio in the background of your basic game you're making, you could even do that as well. Again though, the code will be linked down in that description box if you just want to grab it and run, you can totally do that. Otherwise, let me know down in that comment section, would you be interested in an AI application? I've been working on one, but haven't really got around to fully finishing it, so let me know down below. Otherwise guys, thanks all for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.